All right. Good morning, everyone. We are going to learn a bit more about our percussion instruments. I appreciate your prompt responses on the previous assignments. Thank you to those who had to join a new section of Google Classroom. I appreciate it as it helps me with my grading procedures. Just a little bit about what we're going to do. Uh, we're learning about the different instrumental families now in a little bit more detail. The first assignment was to see how much prior knowledge you had with the subject. Okay, Don't feel scared or embarrassed if you don't know much of this stuff. I know that people have different levels of engagement with music throughout their lives and different levels of interest. Okay, What I will say is that all of the answers to every question I give can be found in either the videos that I put in the slideshow or by reading the slideshow. So all the answers are inside the materials that I give you at some point. So this is more of an exercise in reading comprehension and following directions than it is on your knowledge of music, okay? So just keep that in mind when we're doing this. All right, so let's move on to our percussion instruments. I'd like you to click this video to watch it, okay? It's a quick two-minute video on different kinds of percussion instruments. What we're going to focus on are what are percussion instruments and how do they make their sound. So here we go. Percussion instruments are a family of instruments that create sound when a part of the instrument or the instrument itself is struck by hand, stick, pedal, or any other mechanism. The sound of these instruments are produced from vibrations created from the part of the instrument that was struck. Percussion instruments are one of the oldest and largest instruments that currently exists and takes several categories. The two categories we will focus on will be pitched percussion and unpitched percussion, okay? Unpitched percussion. These instruments do not create a defined pitch or note. They can be struck, scraped, or shaken to create sound. The sound of these instruments can be classified as high or low when it comes to pitch and not a specific note. For pitched percussion, they create a sound that can be identified as a specific note or pitch. These instruments can be struck as well, but typically feature keys instead of just a skin or surface to strike. So there's a video here that says, watch this now. That's about seven minutes long. That will explain more in depth what I'm talking about. What we're talking about here with drums is that when you hit a drum or when you hit a table or when you clap or you hit a tambourine, the sound that you make does not have a note, meaning you can't say, oh, that's an A note, right? That would make no sense. But you can say that the clap is a high pitch sound. And when I stomp my foot or the table, it's a lower pitch sound, right? So it's not defined as a note, but it is called something and that something is high or low. For instance, when we have a drum beat, we have low sounds and high sounds that make the full beat. The bass drum and the snare drum are typically these two. The bass drum is a large drum and it sounds like a low thud. And the snare drum is a smaller drum that sounds like a high crack. So that's what we're talking about when we say un pitched percussion or defined pitched versus undefined pitch. And this video here will help you. So what we're looking at now are some instruments called membranophones. A lot of these instruments are hand drums, right? The only exception is the one in the corner, which is a picture of the full drum set, which we'll get into a little bit more later. But percussion instruments with a Skin stretched across the drum that is struck to produce a sound are also known as membranophones. The word membrano comes from membrane, right? Skin, skin is a membrane. All of these instruments are unpitched. However, their sound can be described as high or low. So if you look at these instruments, you're going to see there's names on them. 
and there's also links. So you can click on these links to see examples of each one of these drums or membrano phones. Each comes from different cultures and each have a different sound. These are unpitched, however, their sound can be described as high or low, depending on the size. Next, we're moving on to pitched percussion instruments. So to start off, the answer to that question, where does the piano lie? The piano is a percussion instrument. It is a pitched percussion instrument. It does not matter at what time period this instrument was played, it has always been a percussion instrument. The reason why it is one is because the hammers strike the strings on the inside of the body. We'll learn more about keyboard instruments as we see the xylophone and the marimba are keyboard instruments because they have a keyboard type arrangement, but they are also percussion instruments because they are struck with a mallet. Okay, so this is a marimba and this is a xylophone. Next up, we have steel pans, which are basically pans with little indentations on them, and each indentation produces a different note. So the people that play these are really talented, I think, because they have to remember the different zones of the pan, and that's what create the notes. And lastly, we're gonna look at the timpani. The timpani is an orchestral kettle drum. It is very large and the pitch changes when the pedal is depressed. So there's a pedal mechanism on the bottom that's usually up. And when it is pressed down, the pitch gets higher. So these instruments can be tuned and the way they are producing their sound is by being struck. So the player would hit the drum and then if they wanted the pitch to change, they would press the pedal and then hit the drum. So it'd be like, boom, 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 boom. Like that's the sound you get in a timpani. You'll see this in the orchestra. This was like the main percussion instrument that they started using in the orchestra. Moving on, we're going to see two examples of a drum set. The first one is from the 1930s and this is called a trap kit. This is a very like antique looking piece, but the idea is that the drummer was trapped in one spot behind every drum they would need. And then one person, instead of a group of people, would be able to manipulate it to create all the sounds that piece would need. Okay. So in this picture, we're saying the trap kit, it's the predecessor, which means it came before the drum set. The kit is made of a bass drum, a snare drum, hi-hats. Hi-hats are the cymbals that open and close, crash cymbals, and temple blocks. Temple blocks are just like wood blocks that get small to large that make different pitches. If we look at the modern drum set, the modern drum set has multiple different drums and cymbals to enable one person to play multiple percussion instruments at once, right? We call this the trap kit as a loving ode to the trap kit from the 30s. But you'll see similarities, you'll see some differences, right? So we still have the bass drum. We still have cymbals and we still have a hi-hat. We still have a snare drum, but instead of temple blocks, we have toms. And toms, they we have some on the top and one on the floor, and they will be from high to low. So whenever you hear a drummer do a fill or go, duh, 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 it's across the toms, and they're going from a higher tom pitch to a lower tom pitch. Still not a pitched percussion instrument because it does not have a note. And lastly, we're going to talk about auxiliary percussion instruments. Auxiliary, per per uh, auxiliary means basically anything that is secondary, right? So in places where there needs to be a lot of different sounds like a jazz orchestra or a Latin percussion ensemble, you'll see different kinds of percussion instruments. We have the tambourine, shakers, clave, and guira, and maracas, which are typically found in Latin music and Brazilian music. You'll see the guira has two different shapes. Uh, this one is more from the Dominican culture, and this is more of something you would see in the classroom. Um, these instruments are rubbed, right? A tambourine is shaken or struck. 
maracas or shakers or even a bell is shaken. And then clave, you would hold one in one hand and strike it with the other one. The triangle, you would hold the triangle up and strike it with the beater. We see the triangle a lot in classical music as well. So he, for the last question on your form, I want you to just look at some of these percussionists. These are some suggestions of people that I know about or have listened to. You can choose either a percussionist. All right, here's some African dudes that play some percussion music that are recent. Really cool stuff. And then here's a little bit about some famous drummers that I like or respect. This is the source I got it from. I want you to pick somebody that plays percussion or drums, and I want you to listen to a song that they play on. And I want you to talk to me about what you heard in the song. Maybe even comment on how that person plays their instrument and what drew, what drew you. Why did you choose this person to research? And that answer could be, I didn't know anyone. I thought he sounded interesting or I thought she sounded interesting, and that's why I looked them up. That's a perfectly good reason. Okay? All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for keeping up with the Google Classroom. Send me an email if you need to. All right? Take care and peace.